If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. We don't get snow too often here in Georgia, so when we do, it's special, to me at least, and I want to spend as much time in it as I can. But while running around in the snow, I became inspired to do a quick little discussion about an underutilized aspect of magic, snow. <laughs> so, for those that don't know, snow is a super type. It can be applied to lands, creatures, enchantments, artifacts. Um, I, as far as I'm aware, I can't remember any uh, non-permanents that are snow, but it's a super type, which means that it's not affected by uh, things that would change subtype. Uh, for example, uh, regular mountain is a basic mountain. Snow-covered mountain is a snow basic mountain. Mountain is a subtype in both cases. Uh, the same is true for plains, for instance, and the reason that this is really important is that when you play Blood Moon, when someone plays a Blood Moon, it affects subtypes, not supertypes. So that plains of yours uh, is still just a rig it's a snow covered plains. It's still snow, it's still basic, and so therefore it's still plains. But let's say that you have, for instance, the white and blue snow dual land that comes in tapped. In that case, if Blood Moon hits, It'll come in tapped, it'll just generate red, because it's not basic, but it'll still be snow. Now, one of the more popular or more prominent decks that happens to use a lot of snow is Scred Red, or as MTG Top 8 calls it, Snow Red. And this deck is... Uh, it's certainly fallen out of favor. It isn't seeing nearly as much play. Other Blood Moon decks have taken its spot, and have just gotten more powerful in its stead. That being the case, it's still certainly uh, a force with which to be reckoned, but it's not the only red deck, or uh, it's not the only snow deck that there is. Traditionally, one of the win cons in the deck has been Boros Reckoner. So a classic play with the deck is Boros Reckoner, and then play Bonfire of the Damned. Not Bonfire of the Damned, oh, um, the 9 mana, 13 damage to all creatures, but it costs less for each creature out. And when you hit your Boros Reckoner for 13, it's Blasphemous Act, is that it? Uh, you hit your Boros Reckoner for 13, they are dealt 13. And if you have some way to make it indestructible, well, all the better for you. Say, uh, a Boros Charm, for instance. Flavorful. Alright, so... That all being the case, Boros Reckoner has red, 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 or white, 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 in its cost. In other words, there's no colorless. So you can't run scrying sheets, or if you can, just you have to make sure you play it last. If you have three lands and one of them scrying sheets, well, sorry for you because you're not going to get the Boros Reckoner out on time. Unless you draw into one. But, lately, other red cards have taken Boros Reckoner's spot, uh, and the deck has changed, the deck has morphed over time. Uh, so, for example, we're not running the I'm going to wrath myself and hit you in the process uh, strategy. We run, say, Pia and Kirin Nalar, or we run uh, Storm Breath Dragon, I think it's called. The uh, <laughs> protection from white, flying haste, well, of course, flying, it's a dragon, uh, that monstrous is to deal damage. Y it's on the screen, there you go. It's, uh, it's great in the meta if there's a lot of Path to Exile running around, and it also looks good in a Fatal Push meta, actually. So, that all being the case, why is it not seeing much more, or much play? There are other Blood Moon decks that just happen to use it uh, more explosively. Um, that, that's part of the reason. The other is that the deck is itself, it's very susceptible to burn, it's susceptible to a lot of combo decks, um, and yeah, it just it doesn't do anything explosively. There are those hands where you have Blood Moon, and then there are every other hand. <laughs> There's every other hand. But it's more than just that. So, 
if you want to run a snow deck and you don't want to run Scred Red, which by the way, I, I should mention that too, named Scred because of the uh, one mana instance called Scred, <laughs> deals damage to creature equal to the number of snow permits you control. Well, lo and behold, you only have about 500 million of them in the deck. But there's a, uh, I, my enchantment prison deck actually runs Snowlands. And it runs snow covered plains. It runs scrying sheets. Now, why is scrying sheets so important? When you get to a point in the game where you're not using your mana for anything else, then you can use scrying sheets to sort of find, to have that inevitability. You reveal the top card, or rather, you look at the top card. Then if it's snow, you may reveal it and add it to hand. Well, when you get to the point of the game where you're just top decking, this helps you to find your threats more quickly. Uh, if you happen to see that it's not snow, good on you, you're going to get the card anyway. If it is snow, if it is a land, well, you know, that gets you one card closer to finding your Elspeth or your Heliod or Emrakul or Karn or Luminarch Ascension, or all these cards that I've tried in the past uh, to make work in the deck. Now, if you want to try to run a two-color snow deck, say I want to run uh, Enchantment Prison, but I want to run other colors as well, I have to be really careful. For one thing, the <laughs> there aren't that many snow lands. There's a snow basic for each, and there's snow ally duels, not enemy duels, so I can't run, say, white-red and have the duel land for it. And even then, the duels that I do have come in tapped, unfortunately. That being the case, I can run fetch lands for the ones that I'm wanting. Say, for example, I want to run an Azorius enchantment prison. What could I do? Well, I could have, uh, you know, however many of the basic planes, base, uh, snow-covered, basic plains, snow-covered basic island, and then I could run the duel, and then four fetches, and they would be uh, flooded strand, which can get snow-covered lands. That's still only effectively eight duel sources, unless I splash in for uh, non-snow, like Hallowed Fountain. It doesn't leave too many options. Now, if I want to try to run the Blood Moon version, again, I only have allies, so Red is allied with green and black. And I guess I could try green for uh, Birds of Paradise for the turn to Blood Moon. Um, you know, run wooded foothills in the deck. It would allow me to play Blood Moon and Scred and Lightning Bolt. So that's pretty good. That, that sounds like an interesting deck. You could have some sort of Scred land destruction maybe with cards like um, Boom and Bust. Which, by the way, Boom Bust plus Goblin Dark Dwellers. Combo. Uh, I don't know. Stone Rain, Molten Rain. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. But that's an awful lot of basics you'll have to put in the deck. Because there just aren't that many snow uh, lands otherwise. There are some snow creatures. Um, and in the Enchantment Prison deck, if I want to, I could run Cover of Winter. Or I could run, they have an, a snow angel that I could potentially use as a wing con. I don't know that it quite makes the cut, but it's, it's an option, it's up there. I would like to brew some more with snow going in the future, so if you have any suggestions, please, please let me know. Uh, for modern, obviously. All right, take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.